Hello everyone, Adam here from Winning with SketchUp, and today I want to share with you guys a very cool trick for creating multi-textured components. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply multiple materials to a single set of component instances while controlling the UV mapping coordinates or the texture positioning coordinates. So the first demonstration here, I'm going to texture these component instances. So I have 54 of these plank components that I want to texture with this varied wood grain material so that I can quickly sample them and, and bring them over for the demonstration. So what I want to do is I want to have various materials properly mapped onto these boards but still maintain these as component instances so that we can get all the benefit of being able to continue modeling with these, being able to select all of them quickly or being able to get a good count on them. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we wanna do is we want to make sure that all of our interior faces here have a default material applied to them. So we can see that up here in the entity info, these all have the default material. If everything has a default material, it will inherit whatever we apply to the outside of the component. So we can go and use our paint bucket and eyedropper tool and sample and start painting these. Now the problem is these need to be adjusted. The scale is not proper on these. Now we could get in here and do that with our material edit dialog and get in here and change the dimensions. But I wanna show you a better way to do this. All the credit for this little trick goes to something that I saw over on the SketchUp community forums from Christina Enneroth and Aurelius. So credit to them, first of all. All right, so what we need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and paint a diffuse material back on top. So you can see we have a default material um, on top of the component and then all of the faces inside are the default material as well, front and back. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to select our material and we're going to get into our component and I'm going to go ahead and start painting this and instead of using the default SketchUp uh, painting tools I'm going to use Frito's through paint and makes things a little easier and faster to see what's going on so I'll go ahead and paint this and then I'm going to right click and hit tiling one by one and that went ahead and painted that for me and I can do that here as well Close this face here on the bottom, let's paint that, tile it one by one, do that here as well. Um, we could also drag select, but we get some pretty good results doing it this way for now. Alright, so we've basically established the uh, UV coordinates or the texture position coordinates for these faces. Now what was described in that forum post is that the way SketchUp writes the attributes for a particular face. So this particular face here, it writes the material that's stored to the face separately from the coordinates that that material sits on. So there's a little trick that we can go up here to the entity info and we can actually swap out, if we select all of the faces here, we can select faces and edges, or we can go to selection toys and just select faces. And we can go up here to the front side and what we want to do is we want to swap out all of these for a default material, like so. All right, so now what SketchUp did is it overwrote the texture that we had applied, but it still maintained the coordinates that we had applied there. Now what we can do is go and use our paint bucket tool, sample our material here, and as we paint it, it's going to remember that. Now we can go and sample these other materials. As long as our textures themselves are uh, the same dimension, they will go ahead and adhere to the UV coordinates that we've created with this initial texture. If they happen to be different dimensions, then they will change relative to that first, uh, whatever the dimensions are of that first texture that we set up. So that's important to remember. What we can do, um, another little trick, if we want to go ahead and randomly paint all of these, we could go through by hand and just sample and paint and come and start to paint all of these uh, like this. Or we could go through, select all of them, then use selection toys, select only front default material. Then we can use the random select plug in um, from TIG and we could go in random select 
then we could sample and paint percentages at a time. I'm going to show you guys a lot easier way to do this. We're going to sample one material. We're going to select all of our component instances and paint them all the same color, like so. And then we're going to sample the next one. We're just going to make sure we drop all the rest of these in here. We wanted to paint all of them because we don't want any default material. So we essentially have all six colors applied to all of these instances. Now what we do is select all the instances and there's a plugin from Eneroth called Eneroth Randomized Material in the Extension Warehouse. If you grab that and run that, what that'll do is randomize all of those materials across all of those um, different component instances. And they are still all instances with UV mapping and all of uh, these random materials applied. So now we could get in here, we could do further modeling. Um, if we wanted to maybe chamfer the edges like so. Uh, let's just grab all of these, let me deselect the bottom. And now we've chamfered all these edges and you can kind of see what's happened here is we've lost our mapping. So the way to go and fix that, we're actually going to sample this. Now it's important to remember if we get inside here and we click on the surface, we can see that there's no material applied to this surface. And that's what's allowing us to paint on the outside of the component. But if we want to get in here and we want to fix, let's say these chamfers and fix the mapping, we would go back to this original one and let's paint over top with our material and maybe go tiling 1v1 and we can adjust it here like so and if we zoom in we can see that we're getting a little better mapping across those uh, chamfers we can also turn on hidden geometry if we wanted to and then deselect everything and just kind of drag paint and maybe just paint the chamfer on top then go tile it one by one and we could do the same here. So however we wanted to go and do that. Now, whatever we've painted, um, our randomized materials have kind of disappeared because all these other components, if they're not default materials inside, they still have those materials applied to the outside of the component. But the insides now are textured with this um, this wood texture here. So what we'd have to do is go back to our original and all we have to do is switch this back to default like so. And now all of these have gone back and inherited uh, the material that's applied to the outside. Another thing we can do if we look at these we may see um, a section like this where we have uh, multiple ones and we're, we're starting to get some repetition. We can go and sample uh, some other materials them. Now let's look at uh, another instance down here and what I'm going to do here is offset this circle and create some border stones here. So we can fill this with split donut. Let's grab everything, deselect the center and deselect one of these. Let's group and delete. Now let's make a component here, set the axis, midpoint to midpoint, create, and let's make a copy, rotate a copy from the center, and we're going to do 35 more, because this is a 36 sided circle. Now we have 36 components around the outside. So let's go through with the same idea, let's texture these, let's grab one of these, and let's get in here and apply that. Now we could also, instead of through paint, use something like Sketch UV. Select the face first, like so. Or we could uh, use UV Toolkit here and go Fit Texture to Quad Face. Select the face first, but like so. Or we could use through paint again. Um, switch it to quad mesh UV and then tiling one by one like so. Now we want to do the same thing. We want to go up here, entity info, switch this to default like so. Now we can get in. We still have this loaded up. 
let's select all of our components and paint them all. Deselect that. And now let's grab, paint one of these with this one, paint this one with this one, paint this one with this one. And you see what's happening here? So this one looks off, it's not fitting properly. And the reason for that, I did that intentionally to show why exactly. It looks the same here. But if we examine these and we go to the edit dialog, we can see that um, these are eight by one inch. And this one is the same, this one is the same, and this one is completely different. So what we would wanna do is get in here, copy that dimension. Let's get back to our brick here. We can break the aspect ratio and paste that in there fix that one as well. And you can see what happened up here that this fixed this. Um, we could actually adjust it a little bit if we wanted to maybe do 1.1 or 1.03, something like that. You can see that we can adjust this as relative to that initial size to tweak that into place. And also use reset that there if that's bothering you um, but now because we have all of these painted and just to show you if I would paint one of these with a default material and then we would use Eneroth randomized materials that default material is going to get put into the mix so that's why I'm saying we should um, paint with everything with one material, deselect, and then go and apply, oops, sample, paint, sample, paint, sample, paint. Now we can select all of the instances and randomize them all like so. And if we have a space like that, we could drop some other ones in there. Oops. Right, this over. Now, one last thing. Let's take a look at applying two different types of texture mapping on one object and how we would go about doing that. So what I did here is I created these boxes and inside of these boxes, we have an arch. That arch is made of quad geometry. So what we can do is texture the arch with quad mesh UV texturing method. And then we'll just texture the rest with a normal um, natural UV using um, through paint. So in order to do this, I've created both the arch and the rest of the box on one material. And I did that over in Photoshop. So I made sure that all of these are the same size. Uh, they're the same resolution and they're the same dimensions over here, whatever they imported at. And then now what I can do is go in here, we go call through paint, we're gonna set this to quad mesh UV and turn on surface mode. And now we can get in here and paint this. And what we wanna do is we're gonna scale this up and we want to align just the brick, like so. And pull that down, um, we can click it and use the down arrow, it's a little easier. Maybe scale it down just a little bit. Uh, we could also scale it this way. However we wanted it to look. Like so, and there's our brick arch. Now with the same material, I'm going to switch my painting mode to natural UV. And we're gonna drop that in there. We're gonna scale this up. Like so. drag this across and let's paint the top as well I have to scale that up just a hair okay so now we have two different UV modes on the same object uh, these are all three component instances you can see that here and now what we want to do is the same thing select everything go and change this to a default material like so. 
And now what we can do is we have these three different materials down here and they're all set up the same way. So we can go sample that, let it load and then paint. Sample this. And then sample this one. So we're showing two different materials in two different UV types. Um, it's actually the same texture with two different materials built into it. So that's important. Um, I did that over in Photoshop. So you might want to uh, just know that you'd have to do that. You can also do this over in SketchUp um, if you wanted to use the combined textures method and um, just texture uh, square and have two different textures inside of it and then combine them into a single texture. Um, you could use that as well. And then you could also do things like um, change the hue. So if I wanted to sample this material here, let's say, load that up, I could hit the create material button. It's going to show me the material here. It's going to have the same size and I could get in here and adjust um, the color variation of this say okay wait for that to load in and we could use that method to create let's say multiple variations of the same texture which would have the same uh, dimensions and we would be able to go ahead and drop that in anywhere that we're using this technique so again we could drop that in here and let's right click and go tiling one by one like so and now with the paint bucket i could grab that and drop that into here and you'll see that it'll pick up the same, again, UV mapping. So those are some new techniques for uh, creating multi-textured components and maintaining UV mapping or texture position. So I hope that was helpful for any, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.